let's get into the, the real meat of the most poisonous plants in the garden. Digitalis, foxgloves. They contain substances which work on the heart, sometimes called digitalin, digoxin, various different names. And they work by making the heartbeat slower but firmer. So if you've got an erratic heart rhythm or an inefficient heart, they can be very useful medicines. But obviously too much of them will cause the heart to slow too much. The easy way is to say it slows the heart to a standstill. It doesn't. The brain realises it's not getting enough oxygen, orders the heart to try harder, and you have a massive heart attack. And it's one of those plants where there's not a lot of difference between the amount that will do you good and the amount that will be very harmful indeed. But it's a plant with a fascinating story. There's a chap called John Gerard, I don't know if you've ever heard of John Gerard, wrote a herbal, the great herbal history of plants, uh, first published in 1598. And it talks about all the ways that plants can be used medicinally. With the foxglove, he says, pretty, but it's useless. There's no medicinal use for it. In 1775, a doctor called William Withering started looking at the foxglove. It had a reputation of being used as a diuretic. It was rumoured that it could be used to treat a condition called the dropsy. Now, the dropsy is when you get a build-up of, of fluid in the soft tissue. And at the time, they thought that's what it was, and you needed to, to get rid of that fluid. We now know what it is. It's an underperforming heart that leads to the build-up of fluid. So they thought that foxglove might work as a diuretic and remove the fluid. We know what it does, it improves the working of the heart. But William Withering started looking into this. He heard rumours from some women in, in a village in Shropshire, some of those wise women. And he also heard that someone had successfully used it, so he started working on it. He ran a free clinic. He couldn't do it these days. The people who came to his free clinic, he experimented on them. Didn't tell them. But he experimented on them. He gave them foxglove, <coughs> not just for the dropsy, for all sorts of other conditions. And he kept very detailed notes, even when he killed them by giving them too much. <coughs> and in 1885, he published his notes, and everyone realised that you could use the foxglove to treat the dropsy. And it's one of the most useful heart medicines still today. But the reason I particularly like this story is because William Withering was unusual for three reasons. First of all, he was prepared to give some credence to this story that women in a village in Shropshire used it as a folk remedy. Secondly, he kept these very detailed records and he didn't mind admitting when he got failures. But the third thing was that he had this sort of Emperor's New Clothes moment. Because when he realised that the Fox Club would treat the dropsy, he looked and said, where does it say, on this plant, use me to treat the dropsy? Where is the doctrine of signatures with the fox club? And he sort of exploded the doctrine of signatures and that was the beginning of a more rational look at what substances did and how they could be used. 